Hi guys, welcome back to the home and homestead. My name is Rebecca and today on the homestead you'll be joining me in my kitchen where we do some pressure canning. Together we'll be making some baked beans or pressure canning navy beans with a molasses sauce. And I'll be doing two different batches of two different recipes. One will be a regular sweet molasses style baked bean recipe and the other will be a spicy version. So follow along when we go through the process of pressure canning some navy beans in a molasses sauce for homemade baked beans. So first what we're going to do to prepare our navy beans for pressure canning and making these baked beans is we're going to do some pre-soaking of the beans. And we'll do the quick soak method per the NCHFP or the National Center for Home Food Preservation. And their process of pre-soaking via the quick soak method is to take three cups of water for one cup of dried beans, bring that to a boil for two minutes, then you'll shut off the heat and let those beans soak for one hour. So in this large stock pot, I have eight cups of dried navy beans and six quarts of water, which is 24 cups of water. The beans have been cooking in this water you can hear them just starting to come to a low boil. So we'll let these continue to cook and come up to a boil. And I'll boil them for two minutes and then I'll shut this heat off and let them soak for one hour. Then they will be ready for cooking in the molasses sauce that we will make together. All right, so now the navy beans have done their pre-soaking process. What you can do is per the NCHFP, they say drain the beans and then heat them back up again in some fresh water to boil and then kind of strain them away from that warm water and place them into the cans for canning. What I'm going to do is kind of kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to add the drained beans in with our molasses sauce that we are making that will really help the flavors incorporate with the beans and just give a really nice rich baked bean result. Now what we're going to do is create the molasses sauce for these baked beans and we'll add these prepared navy beans that I just spoke about. So for a standard recipe, it calls for two cups of beans and that's dried beans. So whenever you're calculating for this recipe, base the amount of sauce that you're making on the dried bean amounts. I will provide a link in the description box below for both the single batch recipe as well as the quadruple batch, which is what we will be doing today together. So in this Nesco Roaster, I have 32 cups, which is eight quarts of water because I am doing eight cups of dried navy beans per batch. Now they have since at least doubled in volume since they've been pre-soaking and doing the quick soak method. But that's why I mentioned before base your sauce on the dried ones, and then we'll move forward. So now we'll add four cups of diced onion, if you wanted to use a dry minced onion you would use one cup of dry minced onion. Next we will add three quarters of a cup of tomato paste or tomato powder which ends up being a six ounce can of tomato paste. You can check out my video on how to make a tomato paste substitute or tomato powder by using your dehydrator. Next we will add a half of a cup of white vinegar and that is 5% acidity vinegar and a half cup of Worcestershire sauce one cup of molasses, one cup of brown sugar, an eighth a cup of canning salt, plus two teaspoons, an eighth a cup of ground black pepper, 
plus two teaspoons. And an eighth a cup of mustard powder plus two teaspoons. An eighth a cup plus two teaspoons is equivalent to eight teaspoons. So now let's mix this all together here. This is our molasses sauce base for our baked beans. Now we will add our prepared navy beans. And mix them in here. Now this is an 18 quart Nesco roaster. I'm doing a quadruple batch here, which is a four times batch. If you were doing a single or a double batch of this recipe, you could use the six quart Nesco roaster. Alternatively, you could also use a really large stock pot to make this recipe. Now I'll put the cover on to help the process of cooking. And I'll turn this up to 250 degrees. What we're going to do now is cook this and bring this up to a boil and we'll let this simmer for about 30 minutes. Then this will be ready to put into the canning jars. All right, so the beans have been cooking. I ended up increasing the temperature to 325 degrees and they have been cooking for about two hours. It took about an hour and a half to bring this up to a boil and now it's been boiling for about a half hour. So now we can get these into the jars for canning. I have regular mouth pint jars here. What I'm going to try to do is take and fill the jars about halfway with the beans. Should be about one ladle full of my canning ladle. And then once the jars are all filled with the beans, then I will top off with the sauce. fill these to about a one inch head space. take a hand strainer and see if I can get one more jar out of this. Maybe even two.
Okay, so here we have 16 pints of the first batch of our baked beans or the navy beans in a molasses sauce. So now I'm going to take on the other end of the head space tool is a bubble removing tool. You just kind of slide that around outside in the middle and it just helps release any little bubbles that may have formed between the beans and things that you've added to these jars. Okay, so a few of these are a little high, so I'll take a spoon. I'll just take a little bit of that liquid from the ones that are high and put that to ones that maybe are a little bit low to get that one inch head space we're shooting for. If I need, I have more of the sauce in the Nesco roaster. You can always add a little more sauce to a few of these. Now we'll wipe the rims and the side threads of these jars. So just help to ensure a nice seal on the jars once we get the lids and rings on. While this batch was cooking in the Nesco roaster, I had the second batch cooking in the stock pot. So they were coming to a boil and I let them sit for an hour. So they'll be ready to go into the Nesco for that recipe as soon as I get these into the pressure canner which I filled with water and heating up so I can get these in to the canner as soon as the lids and rings are on. Okay, so just put the lid followed by the ring, just finger tight. The ring is just there to hold the lid in place while it's being processed. Then once it cools and the jar seals, then the ring can be removed and used for other canning projects. All right, let's get these into the pressure canner. So we're over at the pressure canner. I have it all set up and ready to go. I have it on a little side burner set to medium high heat. I have two quarts of water in here as well as a jar tray or jar rack on the bottom. The amount of water that is added to your pressure canner is all based on the manufacturer. So make sure you add as much water as they suggest. Now we'll place these pint jars filled with the beans into the canner. So when you're pressure canning, you could do multi-layers of jars in your canner. So I have eight on the bottom and my canner came with another tray so I can put that on top of those and then put another layer of beans on there. This is the Miro 22 quart weight style pressure canner. And I can provide links for all the canning equipment that I like to use. If you're interested in canning or if you have been canning and you wanted to check out some other equipment and tools to use for canning. There we go. We got all 16 in there. Now what we're going to do is apply the lid. There's a little arrow on the side here as well as on the handle. You just line up the arrow and slightly depress it down and then they line up evenly. Now it's closed. Now what we're going to do is allow this pressure canner to build up steam and pressure and eventually steam will consistently come out of this little stem here. Once the steam comes out consistently for 10 minutes, then I will add the 10 PSI weight, and that's the minimum processing PSI for pressure canning. What I mean by that is here is the altitude chart from the Ball Blue Book and the Ball Complete Cookbook for canning. And on the bottom here, it says the pressure method. And based on the altitude in feet on the far left corner, you would use 
the PSI weighted gauge in the middle column if you're using a weighted gauge pressure canner like I'm using today or for the dial style pressure canner you would build the pressure to the setting on the far right column. And that's just something to be mindful of whenever you're canning whether it be water bath canning or pressure canning. So now we'll let this pressure canner build up its pressure. In the meantime we'll head back to the Nesco roaster and get the second batch cooking. So we're back at the Nesco roaster here. I have added another eight quarts of water and I left the remaining molasses sauce that was in there from the previous batch. It will just help give this a little more flavor. So now we'll add four cups of a diced onion again. If you're not going to use a fresh onion, you can do one cup of a dry minced onion. And since this is going to be a spicy baked bean recipe, I have about two cups of a diced fresh jalapeno, which ended up being about five to six nice sized jalapeno peppers. Next we'll add three quarters of a cup of tomato paste. You could also do tomato paste powder. And that ends up being a six ounce can of tomato paste. And we'll add a half cup of white vinegar, that's a 5% acidity vinegar, and a half cup of Worcestershire sauce. We'll add one cup of molasses. And one cup of brown sugar. Then we'll add an eighth cup plus two teaspoons of salt, which is a canning salt, ground black pepper, and mustard powder. And that is eight teaspoons of each of those three ingredients. Mix all this together. And now we'll add the next batch of prepared navy beans. Mix this together one more time. And I have turned the Nesco roaster up to 325. That's what I ended up cooking the first batch at. I started at 250 and I only had it there for about 10 minutes and then I kicked it up to about 300, 325. So it'll take about an hour and a half to get this large amount of fluid and ingredients here up to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, we'll allow it to continue to simmer for about a half hour. So plan on about two to two and a half hours for the cooking of the beans here. Just trying to make sure I have all the tomato paste and molasses mixed through and incorporated there. Okay, I'll get the lid back on and we'll let this cook for about two hours. All right, guys. Now the pressure canner has been releasing steam steadily from the stem. Kind of hard to pick it up on camera, but you can see little drops of water falling onto the top of the canner. So now we're going to add our weight on here. This is a 10 PSI for the minimum pressure. So we'll put that on. Now that the 10 PSI weight is on, there's a little red button here. Much like a Instant Pot or other pressure cookers, when this tab goes up, that means that the inside of the pressure canner has built to the proper PSI that you set. And once this little tab rises, then telling us that we can start the timer for the 65 minute processing time for the pint jars. If you're doing quart jars, it would be 75 minutes. So now we'll wait for this little button to rise here. All right, there we go. This little tab rose, so now we can set the timer for our processing time. So I wanted to show you guys how this weight style pressure canner releases excess pressure. The weight that we place there spins around and the steam expels and that's how it regulates the internal pressure within it. If that happens while you're processing, don't be alarmed. That's normal and how it works. If you have this style gauge that has the numbers on top, 
that you have to watch a little closer and either increase or decrease the temperature on your burner so that the number so that the number for the PSI stays in the range that you want. So now that the processing time has finished, I'm going to turn off the burner here. We're just going to simply let the pressure canner sit and that'll cool down and release its pressure and eventually this little red tab here will fall flat with this handle and then we know that we can remove the weight and open the canner and the jars will be finished. So now we'll just wait for this pressure canner to release its pressure. In the meantime, we can go back to the second batch of baked beans that are cooking in a Nesco roaster and get them put into their canning jars. So here's the second batch of the baked beans and this is a spicier batch with the addition of the two cups of diced jalapenos. And this has been cooking away while the first batch has been in the pressure canner, which works out very nicely when you're doing big batch canning. So I'm going to just turn the Nesco roaster off here and we'll get these beans into the jars. So here again I'm going to put about halfway full of the beans into these regular mouth pint jars. I like to start with about halfway because then once I add the molasses syrup and usually a few beans with it, it ends up being closer to three quarters full of the beans. So anywhere between half to three quarters full would be just fine. So long as they're filled with the syrup to a one inch headspace. This batch has a little more of the fluid than the first because I left the a little extra from the first batch in the Nesco roaster. I didn't want to waste it or lose all those nice flavors we made during the first batch. I just gave these beans a little more liquid to cook in anyway. You can see all these pieces of jalapeno peppers and their seeds in here. Can really smell the jalapeno peppers too. So this should be nice and spicy. So I'm doing a extra large batch cooking of these baked beans. I'm doing two different styles because my mom actually requested some homemade baked beans and I figured, well, if I'm going to be making some, I may as well make a bunch. I'll do a few varieties and I can share with other friends and family. If I'm going to go through the effort of making the baked beans, may as well make a bunch of them. Now let me get the hand strainer in here. See if I can't separate some more beans. Now let's get some of the molasses syrup onto here. We'll just fill to a one inch headspace. Now we're just going to remove any bubbles with our bubble removing tool which is on the other end of the headspace tool and the Ball or Nor Pro Essentials canning kits. You just take the tool and slide it around the edges and throughout just to release any bubbles that may have formed between the beans and other ingredients that you put into the canning jar. Sometimes you'll find after you do this the liquid level is a little lower and then you can go back and add a little more of the syrup or whatever liquid you're canning with to get the necessary headspace that you're looking for. I really like baked beans just as a side dish or when when you're barbecuing and cooking out they're really great to have with your hamburgers, hot dogs, brats, things like that. 
but also when you're camping, a few jars of this, slow cooking over an open fire, are really delicious. And they're nice things to bring to family gatherings and barbecues as well. If you make bean dishes such as calico beans or things like that, a homemade baked bean or molasses syrup bean is a really tasty addition to recipes such as that. And you control the flavors, you control the salt content, and there's no weird added ingredients to this. So let me go back and fill some of these that are a little bit lower. We have plenty of the sauce left to do so. And if some of them are a little too high, just go in with a spoon and remove the excess. Transfer it to something that maybe is a little low. The pressure canner is still releasing its pressure from the first batch, so we have time to make adjustments for this batch. So now again, we'll just take a wet paper towel and we'll run it along the, the top of the rim. And I'll, I like to do the side threads as well. This will just ensure a nice tight seal. And by wiping those side threads, it helps keep your rings a little cleaner as well since you can use them over and over again for other canning projects once your canning item has sealed. These smell really good. You can really smell the molasses and the onions and all the spices we put in there. But besides that, for this batch, I can really smell the jalapeno peppers. Now let's get the lids followed by the rings put on these jars. And again, it's just finger tight just so that the ring holds the lid on while it's being processed. Then later, once it's cooling, the suction effect will happen and the jars will seal and the rings can be removed. So for this batch, I was able to make 18 regular mouth pint jars. So these should all be able to fit in the pressure canner. So you have the two layer capability in the large pressure canners that you can use on your cooktop or stovetop, which is nice when you're doing large batch canning. All right, let's go check on the pressure canner and see how it's doing with releasing its pressure. Once that's ready, I can transfer those jars out to the cooling and sealing area and get these jars in for processing. So now we're back over at the pressure canner. That little red tab dropped flush with the handle. I don't see any steam or anything spurting from this weight so I can safely remove it. Now you just simply give the lid a little turn and lift it away from you so the steam doesn't go into your face and then set it off to the side. Now we can just let these sit in the canner for about five minutes and then I'll transfer them over to the cooling and sealing area and then get the other jars of the spicy baked beans into the canner for processing. Well, here is the first batch. No siphoning, the color looks beautiful, and a few of them have pinged already. So we'll let these cool and seal, and I'll get the second batch into the canner. All right, guys, we did it. Here's 34 jars of baked beans or pressure canned navy beans in the molasses sauce. And we did two different types. On the right, we did 16 pint jars of a regular baked bean flavor. And on the left, we did 18 pint jars of a spicy version. So these will be great to have all year round, but especially during cookout season and barbecues when making dishes like calico beans or when we're out camping, these will be great on an open fire. So if you have some dried beans and you want to try making your own baked beans, I hope the time together we spent in the kitchen helps to inspire you to try this out for yourself. But if you're new to the channel and you'd like to check out more videos on 
food preservation, as well as canning of beans. I have a number of videos. I have some pressure canning of black beans, as well as pressure canning of chili beans, and the chili beans are in the Presto Digital Pressure Canner. And I also did some canning of green beans that we grew in our garden. So you can check those out, as well as a number of other food preservation styles in the food preservation playlist that I have. It's very rewarding to grow your own food and then preserve it so that you, your family, and friends can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time together in the kitchen today. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time. Take care.